stop measuring glucose without measuring lactate. And for goodness sake, someone make a home test for pyruvate. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn. I have a PhD in nutritional sciences, and we are going to talk about why you should always be measuring your ketones and your lactate whenever you measure your glucose. Over on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, Fire in a Bottle has been documenting how restricting branched chain amino acids or BCAAs has gotten his morning glucose down from the pre-diabetic range to about 90 milligrams per deciliter. Then he hosted a friend's birthday party and ate beef, cheese, and beans with a much higher intake of BCAAs than he had been getting recently, and he woke up to a glucose of 111 milligrams per deciliter. The usefulness of this observation is extremely limited by the irrational testing of glucose without testing the other fuel molecules. There is no rational reason to ever measure glucose alone. As an index of diabetes even, it's horrible. Diabetes is a disease of elevated glucose, ketones, free fatty acids, lactate, and triglycerides. I put disease in quotations because all it is in its type 2 manifestation is a broad collection of issues causing global dysregulation of energy metabolism. The fact that there's common risk factors like obesity and sedentariness that have given right, that have risen to great heights in the whole population, making the prevalence of diabetes rise with time, hides the fact that the remainder of the risk factors are highly idiosyncratic. Case in point, high protein decreases my blood glucose, and BCAAs do not stand out as majorly different from protein. But I can give myself a blood sugar of 111 milligrams per deciliter with biotin or some other nutrient that puts stress on complex one of the respiratory chain. Why BCAAs are an idiosyncratic risk factor for his latent potential to become diabetic and why biotin is an idiosyncratic risk factor for my latent potential to become diabetic is infinitely more useful knowledge than the fact that all of us could reduce our probability of activating this latent potential within us by being lean and active. Duh. Go forth and be lean and active. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, you make it sound so easy. It's harder than that. Well, if it's not easy, you got to look for the idiosyncratic reason why it's not easy, Right. We know how to do it. Eat less food, get more movement, burn more energy. And there's many different dietary approaches that people have used who have lost a lot of weight. If it's difficult to maintain a healthy body composition, that means that we're missing something. But I would argue that what we're missing is understanding our idiosyncratic bottlenecks and energy metabolism. What's the likelihood that my reaction to BCAAs and fire in a bottle's reaction to to BCAAs are opposite when it comes to glucose or when it comes to lactate, which he's not testing, what's the chances then that our body composition reactions to BCAAs are not going to be radically different, right? So this is why we need to understand the idiosyncrasies. Now, going all the way down the rabbit hole is going to take a lot of work or cost a lot of money. But there are some simple things that you can do at home, like measure the fuel markers that can help point you in the right direction. And it helps a lot to measure the other fuel molecules, not just glucose. So here's four reasons why BCAAs might raise blood glucose in fire in a bottle's experiments. Number one, BCAAs all require coenzyme A to be metabolized, also called CoA for short. So does the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. If the BCAA pathways complete themselves, CoA comes and goes. It's used and it's free. There's no problem. If they get stuck in the middle, CoA becomes trapped and pyruvate dehydrogenase cannot move forward. Pyruvate rises and spills over into lactate. Glycolysis slows. Glucose rises. So what's going to happen in what you test is glucose, pyruvate, and lactate are all going to rise together. Number two, BCAAs disproportionately funnel into complex two of the mitochondrial respiratory chain, making them somewhat closer to fat and further away from carbs in how they enter the respiratory chain. If the problem was complex 2 impairment, this would cause reverse electron transport into complex 1, elevate the NADH to NAD plus ratio, and elevate lactate without elevating pyruvate. Glycolysis would, would slow, glucose would go up, lactate would go up, but pyruvate would not. If BCAAs, number 3, were simply competing with glucose as a source of energy, the ATP yield would slow glycolysis, but there would be no impact on pyruvate or lactate. Glucose would rise alone, lactate would not. If BCAAs were competing with glucose at the level of acetyl-CoA entering the citric acid cycle due to limited supply of oxaloacetate, acetyl-CoA would slow pyruvate dehydrogenase and convert itself into ketone bodies. Ketones would rise. Glucose would rise. There would be a less pronounced rise in pyruvate and lactate. 
If oxaloacetate were the limiting factor, then leucine would cause more of a problem than isoleucine and valine since they'll generate succinyl-CoA, which can become oxaloacetate. If vitamin B12 were limiting, leucine would cause less of a problem than isoleucine and valine since only these two amino acids require vitamin B12 in their metabolism. If potassium or chloride were limiting, isoleucine would cause more of a problem than the other two because only isoleucine requires potassium and chloride in its metabolism. All the other nutritional cofactors for branched chain amino acids thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pantothenic acid, B6, biotin, lipoate, calcium, and magnesium are shared among all the BCAAs equally. You could do useful experiments by taking isolated amino acid powders from bulk supplements to test your response to different ones, and you can help narrow down the problem. Glucose taken out of context tells you nothing about why it is high or low, whereas putting it into context by measuring ketones and lactate does help you understand why it is changing. If home meters could measure pyruvate and acetoacetate in finger prick blood, we could get even more context. At least start with what's available. Measuring glucose out of context continuously just gives you a continuous stream of out of context information. So down with the continuous glucose monitor fad and up with measuring glucose, ketones, and lactate together. I use a keto mojo for glucose and ketones and a Nova Biomedical Lactate Plus for lactate. For more information on how to interpret these markers, see four markers every expert should but doesn't analyze. Link in the description.